Um, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to show you how we built this little box. It's a background music player that just runs all the time, sending uh, music to an external amplifier. And there's no real user interface other than this button here, which lets you change the type of music that's being played. Movie, TV themes, 1970s Yacht Rock, and Merry Christmas. Yeah, because what other types of music do you need? As you can tell, it's essentially just a clear plastic box from the container store with a Raspberry Pi mounted inside. If you live in Memphis, you can find it. Yeah. If you're wa wa watching this project, you may be wondering why. Um, this project is bananas. Yeah, why would you want to do this? Where's the minions? And, yeah. And the, uh, the Raspberry Pi is kind of over, overkill. But the reason is we had our bathrooms remodeled at work, and you can hear things now, and so we need some cover noise. And there's already a paging system in there, so it's a practical use of this thing. As much as I hate to be associated with purveyors of elevator music and background music and, you know, torturing restaurant workers everywhere. Um, oh, my hate! Another requirement is this is a completely offline solution. You know, a modern workplace with security audits and such uh, really wouldn't be worth connecting this to a network. This just needs to be an isolated thing that runs all the time without any intervention. And we already had some Raspberry Pis on hand. So how do we build this? The first step in building this project is to install the Raspberry Pi default OS Raspbian using the standard process online. This OS comes with everything I need for Python development with the Raspberry Pi. I'm able to use the built-in Thonny Python editor and debugger to write code and bring up a Chrome browser and research any programming issues I might run into. It's all right there on the Pi. You could develop this. I also ended up working through remote desktop uh, by installing a package called XRDP. Working with the Raspberry Pi's GPIO ports is really easy. Each of these ports can be used for output, such as lighting up an LED, or input, such as detecting whether a button's pressed or not. Here you see me as I enter a line of Python code, and I can easily turn it on and off an LED. You just set it high to turn it on, or low to turn it off. It's pretty cool to see your code actually interact with the real world versus just update stuff on a screen. What do you think of this coding stuff? It's pretty cool. Before we get to the code, we need to prepare all of our electronic components for this simple circuit so we'll be able to connect them to those GPIO connectors. Uh, this music player requires four main electronic parts, three LEDs, you know what that means? Lights. Light emitting diodes, yes, to indicate the current playlist and one button to change playlist. Each of these four input and output components also needs a very low ohm resistor connected in series with it to limit the amount of current it draws. I use something like a 230 or 330 ohm resistor. Just Google for some examples of using an LED and a button and you'll find all that information. And I solder the wires securely to the components and resistors and use heat shrink to, to prevent short circuits. I wrote this script in a flexible way so you can just plug in port numbers at the top and configure it. Uh, here you see a diagram of how I connect the LED to port 16. You know, LEDs are polarized, so you have to put the positive on the GPIO and the negative on ground. Here it is with everything hooked up. You know, you can tie all the grounds together. The type of connector you use with the Raspberry Pi will help determine what ports you use. Uh, most of the Raspberry Pi kits come with these single connectors, but I happen to have this four pin connector in my parts drawer, and I used that, and so I picked the GPIO ports that were close to each other. I hate that, that I had to use that yellow wire for ground, but oh well, there it is all hooked up. So I can just basically hook up two little connectors, and I'm done. Finally, we get to the fun part of this project, which is writing the software. Now, before I continue, I'd like to say this is not an original idea. I'd like to acknowledge the work done on Instructables.com by the user Gaboo, however you say that, which was the inspiration for this project. I didn't end up using any of that code, but the idea of using the built-in Omex player and the hardware-controlled switch uh, was a great idea. Thanks. I made several improvements to the code, which you can see listed here. And in the spirit of sharing, I'll uh, make this code available online, but of course, the usual disclaimer, there are no guarantees. So now it's time for a demo. I found a website online that would generate MP3s for text you type in, so I had it play a startup sound just to let you know what's happening once it boots up. Background music system. It uh, retrieves the last playlist ID from a file, lights up the LED, and just kicks off a random song from that folder. When you press the button, an interrupt function is called, which kills whatever is playing and then cycles to the next playlist folder defined in that configuration object. The whole program is built around this infinite loop that just starts a new song whenever it detects that the music player is exited. And I had to do a bit of work to make sure it didn't hang and uh, seems to be working fine. I've left, uh, left it running and it's run for days and I have a cron job that rebooted every so often to uh, head off any, any memory issues. Now there's no user interface on this thing, but I've built a way to update the music from a USB drive. You just put the USB drive in and let the Pi detect it and then if you name the folders uh, corresponding to the playlists uh, or then it'll update it. So then you just cycle through 
USB drive found. Looking for playlist up. Update started. Please wait. The voice prompts get cut off a bit here for some reason, uh, but it's good enough you know what's happening. So right now it's deleting the existing music on the SD card and replacing it with what's on the drive. And Update. And then finally it ejects the drive. Ejecting USB And then the 70s Yacht Rock will be replaced. So then the system unmounts the drive and you just unplug it. So anyway, so uh, we installed the music player in the bathroom and uh, the feedback was uh, positive, I guess. So now with it installed, we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, it does, uh, it goes to this uh, cyber data paging system, which does uh, degrade the sound a little bit, but we've got a captive audience, so uh, <laughs> they have no choice. But uh, See you next time for another video. Bye-bye.